Hi, I'm Bob Garner, and thanks for tuning us in tonight for another edition of Ask the DNR. It happens twice a year, April and October, right here on WCMU Public Television. So go to the, the do take a look at the number at the bottom of your screen, 1-800-727-9268, and call, make sure, or you can go on uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, get your questions uh, to our phone operators right now so that we can ask them on Ask the DNR coming right up in just about a half a minute. Hey, thanks, folks, for coming uh, coming back to ask the DNR with us. Uh, every year, like I say, or twice a year, CMU Public Television knows that hunting and fishing and obeying the laws for those sports are very, very important things here in northern Michigan, central Michigan, and in southeast Michigan, too, where we now have tremendous coverage. And so consequently, uh, they, they want you to get things right, and they want to bring the experts on to answer your questions. Uh, tonight, we have Russ Mason, who is the chief of the Wildlife Division. Russ is here. And Russ... I as I always say, I love the look in your eye and your straight, uh, the fact that you're a straight shooter. I, I, I'm really glad and grateful you are back. Of course. I love and, it. <laughs> and then my old buddy, uh, Dean Molnar. We're old friends going way back. He's the assistant chief of, of law division. This is probably about the 30th time you've done it, Dean. Uh, probably all that, Some, yes. Somewhere right in there. And one of my favorite folks, too, Mark Tonello, uh, fisheries biologist out of Cadillac. Uh, he'll be answering fisheries questions. And actually, we'll all be helping each other answer, answer uh, these questions because the most important thing is getting you the information you need uh, before you uh, take off hunting or fishing in this great old state of Michigan. Yeah. A couple of housekeeping measures I want to take care of. I want to thank Rebecca West and Jeff uh, Borma, who are here from the you know, Wexford uh, Misaki Intermediate uh, School District, and their conservation resource uh, farming or agriculture classes, and they're here answering questions. So, folks, make your questions uh, as the best you can, as succinctly as is possible, and they'll get them over to me. And also, Dave Hopp. Who answers the phone and is the uh, who was does the meet and greet at the uh, at the DNR field office or office in Cadillac Service Center in Cadillac? Oh, yeah. Dave Hopped is here and he answers questions all day long, so he's here writing your questions down uh, to get asked. And Sue Sobeski is here also from the Cadillac office, and we are really grateful to have them. A couple of things: uh, no matter what happens tonight, go get them, Tigers. We <laughs> we need another win, Tigers. And then uh, also if seven or the the uh, number to call is one eight hundred seven two seven nine two six eight, or you can go to you can tweet us at uh, hashtag ask the ask the hashtag ask the CMU and uh, Facebook dot com ask uh, slash. Facebook.com slash Ask the Specialist. I don't know about all this social media stuff. I really don't partake in it, but I know a lot of you uh, uh, really have started to use it since it's been available here on, uh, on uh, public television. Okay, now Michigan Out of Doors will, uh, will be on, I think, at 9 o'clock in an 8.30 Wilderness Journal. So let's get started. Here are some questions that Dave Hawk has, uh, has taken at the DNR recently. And I guess this would go best for Russ and actually Dean too. Did the antler point restriction start this year in the Northwest Lower Peninsula? No, <laughs> not till next year. Not so, till next year. Oh, I'm sorry. You know that's wrong. The that is wrong. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, <laughs> no, they do start this year, this fall. Okay, in correct. That part of this the year. Yep, they mm -hmm. do. And so there'll be antler point restrictions in the Northwest and in the Northeast Lower Peninsula. They're a little different, so you need to look at your guide as you go forward. There's some differences because what we have in the Northeast is for tuberculosis management. What we have in the Northwest Lower is strictly antler point. And that, that, was, that came about because hunters petitioned for it and... It was a popular vote. In fact, it had the, the, the highest percent response we've ever had in any of our antler point surveys. And it was a super majority of hunters from that part of the state that said that they wanted this. Now, some guys, by the way, said, well, why didn't you survey landowners? And not just hunters. And the answer for that is uh, the seven time, 17 times we've done this, landowners always 
prefer antler points more than people without land. So if hunters like it, most likely all the landowners will too. And and most likely a lot of a lot of those hunters are hunting private land they own or know the owner. So. Yeah. Okay. Can I still take an antlerless deer in the areas with antler point restrictions during the archery season? Dean? Yes, they can. Um, years ago, we had ex experimented with a few counties that you couldn't do that, but that's been long gone, so they're good to go. Okay, Mark, Mark Tonello and Dean, this, this is a toss-up question for you. Sounds uh, like a uh, quiz bowl, doesn't it? Anyway, what is considered, or what is it considered a foul hook uh, fish, like salmon? Basically, anywhere hooked other than inside the mouth, okay. anywhere. So the head is not legal, uh, the, the gill is not legal, a legal hook is inside the mouth. And this question is usually uh, relevant mostly for salmon fishing because there is still a fair amount of snagging. So, um, so if you are trying to catch salmon, they must be hooked inside the mouth for that to be a legal catch. Okay, another one. Uh, can I target shoot or sight in my gun on state land? Yes, they can. As long okay. as they're in, in the act of target shooting, they have a, a target set up, not just a stump of a tree or something. They need a target. You know, again, make sure your backstop, you know, think safety. There are a lot of other folks out in the woods at that time of year also. Okay, Dean uh, and Russ, uh, this one comes from Facebook. At what age can I let my grandson harvest a whitetail with a crossbow or gun this season in Michigan? I know that's a kind of a complex answer, so. Well, not, it's not all that complex anymore because it's been, what, about four years now? Couple I think it's the fourth season. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a youth mentor program in the state now, so basically there are no age restrictions for those folks to take their grandsons or their sons and daughters. In the mentoring program. Out, the mentor program, it's, you know, from basically zero to nine years old. They can get a mentor license. It allows them to harvest multiple different species throughout the year. Uh, a couple of things they have to remember that they have to be with somebody 21 years of age or older that's properly licensed you know, for that uh, sport or that, that game they're taking. Uh, they have to have a properly fitting hunting apparatus. Yeah. So that means if, you know, you, if I show up or one of my officers show up and there's a, a six-year-old and has got a big, huge 30-odd six that he can't handle, you know, that's, no. They have to have something that... It's, it's, not, it's, it's not designed to let the adult go out and fill right, a tag right. for a kid. You know, it is, and Bob, if, if folks go on the MUCC's website, Gabe put a great video out last year about taking his family out and cutting down a muzzle loader gives a great ideas on it. Gabe Van Warmer? Yeah. He mm -hmm. is an incredible guy. Yep. And it's a wonderful thing. Remember, it's just $7. You get a couple of turkey tags, you get yep. deer tags, small game license, everything. It's a and wonderful And you help out the fishing game fund. And you help out every Pittman Robertson you kicks bet. in the, the ammunition punch kick in. It, it, this is now this is kind of a question. Uh, I think I know the answer to this. When I live near Kalkaska, can someone please explain why bear hunters can hunt with a large pack of dogs? It seems like there's no sport in that. Well, the truth is, isn't isn't the law still in effect that we wrote 30 some years ago that only six dogs at a time? And, that's that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, and they can't do relaying packs and that sort of stuff? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, you can't hunt bears with a large pack of dogs. Well, to some people, what's a large pack of dogs? Yeah. You know, maybe, I mean, they see three, four, five dogs, that could be a large pack. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a very social sport. There's a lot of families partake in it, a lot of hunting groups partake in it. Um, these folks usually do things um, that maybe some hunters don't understand because they don't partake into that. But uh, it's a great opportunity if you get a chance to go out with somebody running, running bear with dogs. It's a fascinating sport. It, it, it is, and it isn't as slam dunk as people want you right. to believe. I've been out on a number of chases, and I've never seen a, I've never seen a tree mm -hmm. bear. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot, of trees, a lot of chases, too, where you're just huffing and puffing right along. Uh, Facebook, my grandson's eight years old, and he has a mentor license. He's hunting with a legal crossbow uh, during the bow season. Does he physically have to be able to cock the crossbow himself or is it legal to re, uh, reasonably expect an adult to help him out by, uh, uh, by cocking it for him if he does the rest himself? No, they can, they can have help. Um, they can cock the crossbow for him. We're going to, when, if I were to walk up there, the things I'm going to be looking for, as we said with the rifle, to make sure that it properly fits them and that they know the safety features of that, either crossbow or firearm that they're using. But sure, no, 
helping them out. That's why it's called a mentor program. We want mentors to be able to help right. our youth do it right. You just don't want the adults shooting stuff in the kids' license. And we want climate. the adult right next to them within an yep. arm's reach. With length our arm's reach. That's that a good point. That's yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. They know, no setting them down like in the old days when you turned 14, they set you down in the woods and went and hunt somewhere else. Right. Okay. This, hey, from Lincoln, uh, up, uh, up where Great Northern Lumber Company is, Lincoln, uh, it says his fish question limited to a 14 inch handle in trout streams on nets. April, April, June. Uh, does this yeah. apply to fishing from a boat also? It does. It, it by letter of the law, yes, it does apply to those fishing from a boat. Okay. Um, in in um, in uh, folks from Houghton Lake, I uh, got a question for Russ Mason. Uh, says uh, plans are there plans to redo, reintroduce Fisher to the Houghton Lake area? We don't have any specific plans to reintroduce Fisher, although it's something that we talk about every now and again, particularly between ourselves and some of the tribal entities that have an interest in that. Okay, here's somebody from Big Bay, and, and they want to know, uh, uh, and, then, and this is the question, the question you always get. Uh, if, if management deer is supposed to be science-based, why are there a APRs? What principle uh, answers this? Well, there are well, a couple of them, really. There are a couple of them, but the simplest thing is, and makes perfect sense, if you don't shoot little things, they tend to get bigger. So antler point restrictions are a part of a larger package, which includes uh, balancing sex ratios, includes improving habitat, but letting those younger animals get a little bit older does improve hunting. There are some data out there from Alabama, I think is probably the best, and what it's gonna do, most likely over time, is you're gonna see more older animals, more better animals. Some of those extremes are going to go away, frankly. You're going to shoot some of the better genetics out in that first, you know, mm -hmm. some of the better deer are going to go young. But overall, they're going to be more better deer after a period of time. And, and better deer is a pretty subjective sort of... Better deer means bigger bucks with... With most people, okay. More hardware, yeah. Hey, the folks from Riverdale. Boy, they have a they have a great they had a great tavern there years ago. I wonder if it's still in business. Frog legs and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> uh, if you pay four bucks application fee for an elk, but didn't get drawn, you get a refund. I can tell you that one. No, <laughs> you're not going to get a refund on any of those application things, right? I mean, there's nothing that yeah, you get refunded no refund on. Yeah, okay. Um, are you, a question from Flint. Are you allowed to trap or kill pesky animals in the city limits? Animals like uh, raccoons, woodchucks, and possums that uh, dig holes and cause havoc and all that sort of stuff? That matters what city you're in probably, doesn't it? Well, yeah, partially that does go for what the city will allow or they won't allow. What I really recommend for folks if they have issues with that, we have many licensed uh, nuisance trappers out there that actually have businesses. You know, to make sure it's done right and it's done safely. It's I would I would contact one of those first and find out what they charge to see what they're you know what they can do to help you out because that way because if folks aren't familiar with it if they're not using the right traps or don't do it properly we want to make sure that's done humanely and we want to make sure it's done by the letter of the law. What we don't want is guys taking animals, catching them in live traps, and moving them onto that's a right. state game area. The last thing I need is another raccoon on any state game yeah, area yeah, in southern e Michigan. Exactly. Exactly. Question from Houghton Lake, can I duck hunt while floating on a river? And I know where this is leading to, but you cannot float through private lands right. uh, without permission. Right, what it comes down to, uh, property owners, on, riparian property owners on water, on the lakes and on the streams, well, let's talk streams. If you've got permission from both landowners, you can hunt down the river and you can shoot at game, um, at, let's say ducks, that was the question, that or flying. If you've got permission on one side of the river, the center of the river is considered to be what they call the thread of the river. Mm -hmm. So if we're on this side of the, the thread that I have permission to hunt on, we're okay. Or if it's public property that they're floating through. Mm -hmm. But if it's private property on both sides and you don't have permission from the landowners, no. You cannot hunt it and you cannot trap it without the landowner's permission. We get this a lot of questions. Well, I've got permission a mile down from the landing and I no. want to go down here, down to where I have permission or maybe it's state land. Okay, you can float it, but make sure that your guns are unloaded. You're not even thinking about active hunting. Right. Um, if you've got any sort of propulsion, you know, motor on it, it needs to be in the case. If you're just floating, it doesn't happen. What I would suggest that you do. Uh, then when you get to your hunting destination, you can take your firearm out or your crossbow or bow or whatever and then hunt. But short answer, no, not unless you have permission. Not unless you have permission. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, interesting question from Sheboygan. What about perch? Is it, uh, why, why can't you legally spear for perch in Burt Lake? There's only really a one place that I know of you can legally 
Spear right, perch, that's, right, that's Lake St. Clair. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and that's the only it, place in the state that you can spear perch is Lake St. Clair. Has anybody really ever asked about uh, adding to that? Uh, not the not until right now. Not until right now. Okay, we may have had a first here. From Sears. Okay, can you use a handgun in the shotgun zone? Is a 44 mag handgun legal for deer there? Yes. Um, it cannot have any more than nine rounds in the in the handgun, and it has to be at least a 35 caliber or larger. So they're 44. They're good to go. Okay, 38s would would work. Sure. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, why are doe tags allowed to be used on a buck with two inches or shorter? Uh, or shorter antlers, and this comes from Alpena, and that's because they're not considered a they're not considered a uh, legal buck at that point. Mm -hmm. right? That's correct. Okay, since then, okay, is a deer if deer is less than three points, can you tag it with a doe tag? Folks from Central Lake want to know who are in the APR zone. No, it, um, you've got to have just that we just said that the only antlerless tag that you can use on a deer if it's uh, if it's an antlerless or considered to be an antlerless, which is less than three inches. Hey, a good question from Fife Lake, too. We know a lot of number of people from Fife Lake uh, and pretty good conservationists up in that neck of the woods, too. Elk Rapids dredging, why are they not putting gravel in for the trout to spawn? Well, that's a, the, the dredging is down near the mouth. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about the Rapid River. And down there is the, there's very low gradient. So even if you were to put gravel in there, it would quickly become covered with sand. It'd be silted. Yeah, luckily, further upstream, there is plenty of gravel for a trout to spawn on. Okay, Mark Tonello and everybody, everybody knows Mark knows his business. Uh, well, when will the uh, Odin Hatch reviewing window be repaired? I didn't even know, and that's a social media. Yeah, thing. that's uh, yeah, kind of a sad story. We had some vandalism there uh, a couple of months ago. And, uh, did they, they ever catch anybody? I, I believe they did, yes. Oh, and it was okay. juveniles and, you know, unfortunate. But um, that was not, that's not going to be a cheap fix, and so we are working on funding for that. Um, I believe we have gotten the funding, and they're working on the fix, so hopefully by next spring that will be, uh, that will be repaired. Now here's a Bob Garner question from Cadillac. Uh, are are, uh, are fishermen going to be stuck with uh, with uh, footing the bill for that? Um, that's a good question. I I don't know where they got the funding from that, but um, just you know, very unfortunate. If you have never gotten a chance to see that viewing window, you you really need to go to Odin and see that. It, it's really awesome. Or if you've got some time this weekend, Platte River Hatchery. Yep, mm -hmm. uh, we're doing uh, well. There's there's coho salmon at the Platte River Hatchery right now. Um, and they'll be, I believe they're taking eggs through next, or into next week. Um, Little Manistee, we are done. Boardman Weir, we are done. Um, so salmon season is kind of winding down. Okay. Okay, next question comes from another one from Cadillac. <laughs> Can you take a large buck with two, with two points spikes if they're over 12 inches in that area? The answer is no, right? Well, no, because they're in that, in that new area, that antler point restriction area, and even though it's a very, that sounds like a very large spike, it's still considered to be one point on the side. It, it, good, good question coming up here, Russ, and, and this comes from Mancelona. Very, very good question since, uh, since wolves are an issue right now. In other states with wolf populations, uh, uh, how are they addressing their, uh, are they addressing their population different than Michigan? And, and do you believe that taking only 42, it's 43 wolves. 43. 43 is going to address the problem? We do something very different than any other state. What we're doing is, is using hunting as a tool to manage conflict. Other states are looking at it differently. Wisconsin, Minnesota, or any of the western states look at it differently. So we're taking those animals in three locations in the Upper Peninsula where we have a history of wolf depredations on livestock and on hunting dogs. And our intention here is to decrease the number of wolves in those locations to improve on all the things we're already doing there. And it's important to note that that stuff was in our wolf plan. People should have known about this for years. This is exactly what we intended to do. Okay. And Bob, those areas that Russ was talking about, they are defined areas. They're like, they're like a deer management unit area. I mean, they're very defined. So it isn't gonna be all over the- No, year. in uh, fact, no, they're, 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 they're very narrow areas. Right. Very small. Right. Okay. Uh, and then we have a, 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 a another one. Wolves will get to it, but but this is a very important one. For Cadillac for Dean. Are you bringing your boat in to be winterized? I wonder who that's from. Am I bringing my boat? In? I gotta call you, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For Presque Can wolves crossbreed with coyotes, and can you legally shoot them? 
Uh, oh boy! It's very rare for for wolves to don't to cross wolves just like to eat coyotes. coyotes up. And Generally speaking, yeah. but eastern eastern wolves have a lot of coyote in them relative to to western coyotes. Wolves are just big dogs, basically. They'll interbreed with dogs on an occasion or coyotes. And Fishery's question too from. Uh, Ooh, I can't I can't tell where this one is from, but anyway, uh, they want to know why the DNR allows beaver dams to be removed during the spawning season. Um, well, I, that's first of all, you don't need no a permit is not required to remove a beaver dam beaver dam by hand, so you know people can remove them by hand whenever they want, um, and you know certainly if if someone were to ask. Um, or if someone were to be doing another kind of dam removal, then we might, you know, look at, we certainly look at uh, specific times uh, and what is spawning in that body of water. So that, that is an important concern, but sometimes just getting the dam out and, you know, thinking of all the spawning seasons in the future we're going to save. So sometimes getting the dam out whenever you can is the best option. And that's the, in the best interest all the way around. Mm -hmm. Let's go more, more of the wolf questions because they're coming in like crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain the wolf baiting rules for, uh, for a wolf hunter? This is persons from Elk Rapids. They're going to go across the bridge and hunt. Uh, and is roadkill legal? I'll let you do that one, Dave. Yeah, I want to know too question. because well, I got we a buddy no, with a wolf no baiting. Bird. For wolves. What? We have no baiting for wolves right now allowed in this wolf No hunt. baiting is allowed. No, no baiting is allowed. Um, that doesn't mean that we may not look at something in the future, but for right now, is they, they cannot pick up a roe kill to take it out and bait for wolves because we don't allow it. Okay, and, and Lake City, folks from Lake City, one of, one of my favorite towns, uh, is what is the wolf count in the Lower Peninsula? That's, that's interesting. There are a few. There's one. Maybe. One? There are very, very few animals. It's not that they couldn't make it in the Lower Peninsula, but we don't have any good evidence of any kind of breeding population down here. No, no good evidence. We had one, and, and we thought that was working out okay. It goes back to your coyote question. Right. Turns out we went out and we trapped the pups, and they were coyote, which indicates that Mama was looking for friends, and she couldn't find anybody, so she found a coyote. They're not many, if any, wolves at this point in the Lower Peninsula. Okay, okay. Well, we know that crossbreed question now, don't mm -hmm. we? So, okay, so for this one's from Central Michigan. Uh, do you have, uh, have to have a fishing license to fish uh, on uh, my private property? Well, the, that depends. It's a good um, question. Let's say, okay, let's, let's talk to pondage. I have a pond, like, a, you know, in the back of my property. It's solely encompassed in, in my lands. No, you don't need a license because you own those fish. Okay, they are private property. There's no ingress or egress unless that pond or that lake on your private property was stocked by the state at any time. Now, if you've got a pond or a lake on your property and it's, it's got an ingress or an egress, meaning water coming in or water coming out, where fish can migrate through, then yes, fishing regulations apply. Um, I would suggest that wherever they're from or wherever this pond is at, they contact the nearest operations service center Talk to our fisheries biologists because they have records to show that whether or not that body yep, right. of water, and it may have been planted in the 20s, 30s, yep. 40s, it only had to be one time. So if they're, they want to be sure, contact our fisheries biologists and they can help them out. That's a pretty common question we get all the time and uh, we can handle that. So you guys, you guys handle that all the time. Folks from Cadillac want to know if I hit a deer with my car, who can legally handle this? Well, if, there's, so if somebody hits a deer with their car, okay, uh, we can issue a car deer permit for that animal. Um, the car owner usually we give preference to. If they don't want it, they can give it to the next person in line or they can give it to a friend of theirs, but they, before they move it, they need to be sure that they get a car deer collision permit issued from a law enforcement agency. And that can be any law enforcement agency. Any law enforcement Anybody. agency, yep. Okay. Interesting, in, interesting question here, and, and uh, I, I, you wonder how people think, think uh, sometimes uh, with these questions, but this this one seems to make a little bit of sense. Why, uh, from Houghton Lake, why DNR allowed does to be killed after after the rut and they're pregnant? It's one of those questions, and the answer is we we're doing population control. That's why we're removing does, and we're also trying to balance the sex ratio in the herd because it's going to produce a, a better population of both sexes in the long run. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, uh, a deer, this caller called in earlier with a deer question, and, and he wants to know what an older non-typical comes into on one side, any stipulation you allow him to shoot the non-typical to stop the breeding line. There's none of that. No. no. That's the APR, the yep. outer point restrictions. Okay, we're down. 
down to a minute before we go to a little bit of break. Have you considered opening archery season September 15th or before or having an early season? Folks from Silver would want to know. Well, you know, those early seasons are kind of controversial as they stand. And yes, so, they no, are, yeah. we haven't thought about pushing it any earlier. And in fact, if you think about it, you can hunt something in this state about from the 1st of September all the way through February. We've got lots of seasons going on all the time out there. It's important to occasionally give wildlife a rest let's during get to the an, fall and winter. Well, yeah, it, it is. And let's get to another uh, a real, we need a quick answer on this one, uh, social media question. Is it legal to shoot a pie ball okay. or an, uh, an albino deer? Albino deer, no. Albino deer, they pulled that well, off. You can't, okay, what, so a couple you can, years ago? Yeah, yeah, it's legal to shoot both. Yep, legal to shoot both. Okay, well, we've, we've only got just a, a few seconds here. We're going we're gonna to cut to a piece about Central Michigan University here. We'll be gone for just a couple of minutes, and then we will be back with more Ask the DNR. So call the number at the bottom of your screen, uh, Facebook, uh, tweet us, uh, whatever way you want to get a hold of us, we'll try and get your questions to these experts. Public television enlightens, engages, and entertains with local programming. Whether we're out in your community or bringing the community to you, we proudly support the people and places in Michigan. Live from our studio in Mount Pleasant, we weekly invite you to call in your questions and ask the specialists. Ranging from doctors to gardeners to job specialists and more, experts provide you with professional advice. Tune in to discussions with state and federal legislators about current issues in government and politics in our Capitol Report series. And feel like you're part of a classroom with high school students from across the state in Quiz Central, WCMU's original academic quiz show. CMU Public Television production staff travel to the communities in our wide viewing area to profile the people and places that make Michigan a special place to live in our newest original series, Destination Michigan. And we're regularly reporting throughout the state for in-depth documentaries, featuring important topics such as Ernest Hemingway's life in Michigan, Michigan land conservation efforts, and the significance of entrepreneurship in Michigan. Throughout our broadcast day, you'll also notice locally produced vignettes that highlight the university and CMU points of pride. Profile artists, musicians, and craftsmen in Window to the Arts. And engage our younger audience in the children's bookshelf, bringing children's literature to life. You'll find classic children's programming on WCMU weekday mornings and late afternoons, like Curious George and Sesame Street, as well as new favorites guaranteed to assist your child's development from birth to their early school years. CMU Public Broadcasting consistently reaches out to our viewing community beyond our programming. Each summer we take a few sunset cruises under the Mackinac Bridge, featuring live music from various bands and invite you to come along. With the Community Cinema Initiative, we feature free monthly screenings of films from the Emmy Award winning series Independent Lens, followed by interactive discussions with panelists on the featured topic. Giving and receiving lots of hugs are the friendly faces of our PBS Kids programs, with partners like the Genesee District Library, the Flint Institute of Arts, and others. WCMU brings the characters to life, reaching out to kids in our community on screen and in real life. So whether it's timeless drama or up-to-the-minute coverage of Michigan politics, a close encounter with the natural world, or a closer look at the neighbors around you. Questions about the universe? Or questions to win the championship? We're a part of the community and a part of you. And we are back with more Ask the DNR. Russ Mason is here, our, uh, our 
chief of wildlife division, uh, one, one of the really good guys in this world, as is Dean Molnar, the assistant chief of law division, and of course Mark Tonello, the fisheries biologist out of, out of Cadillac, all buddies and uh, all hunting buddies and, uh, and fishing buddies, and, and uh, thanks so much for being here again. We're going we're gonna to rip through these questions. Uh, are fish cribs being planned for any inland lakes? I know in the UP there's a lot of those. Uh, does any provision exist for a group or individual to put them out? Yeah, so um, back in the 1950s, uh, the department did a lot of fish cribs. We did those all over the state in the UP and in the Lower Peninsula as well. And uh, what we learned through research is that fish cribs do not give you more fish. All they really do is Just concentrate, concentrate fish. the fish that you do have. So in some lakes, if there isn't any cover, and, and, you, and that's a desired result, if you want to concentrate the fish you have, then, then, then yes, you, that still can be done. The department doesn't do it anymore, but we can work with groups to do it. Um, but usually when we tell uh, riparian landowners or lake associations that it's gonna concentrate the fish they have and make them easier to catch for other people, you know, usually they shy away from it. It's a misconception that they give you more fish, and they really don't do that. But it sure is fun to fish over a market. Oh, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dean, uh, what is needed for to, for a hunt from a standing vehicle permit? The folks from Topton would be want to know. Okay, they need uh, th that permit is for somebody that is. 100% disabled, meaning you can't walk. Okay, for somebody that cannot it's walk. It's just it's it's, and that's the law. That's, that's not, the law. Not not DNR. Right. It's it's not subjective to what we say or not. But it's the law. They have to be 100% disabled, not being able to walk. Um, they can contact an operations service center for an application if they're interested. And then there's they have to take it their physician. But it's all spelled right out on the permit application. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and this this this. Uh, question comes from Acme up in the Traverse City neck of the woods. Uh, is it legal to hunt an area behind uh, behind a subdivision? Well, let's go through the rules. What, what, what do you need to know? Sure, pretty much um, as long as you're not within a township or a city or, you know, another uh, body of government that has uh, zoning to prohibit not hunting, per se. We have some of that, but they prohibit the discharge of a firearm. Typically, that's a you know, a, a city or a town. Uh, but then other than that, if it's a legal area, they have to be 450 feet away from any occupied dwelling, which would include the house or the subdivision. And that's the safety zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, but that does not apply to, to, uh, to shooting. Or target shooting, right. That, target shooting. That does not apply. The Attorney General several years ago said that the Department of Natural Resources has the authority and ability to regulate hunting, not target shooting. So the 450 zone does not apply to target shooting? No, it does not apply. We get that question a lot, so it's good, I guess, that we talk about it because, you know, they say, well, it's got to be 450 feet. No, but still, you know, they may be subject to any noise, noise, noise ordinances or, you know, they still have to do it safely. They have to have a good backstop. You know, they, it could be a careless or reckless use of a firearm if they're not doing it safely or properly. Okay. Okay, very, very important. Schwartz Creek, down in down in that uh, Flint metropolitan area, uh, Genesee County. What's going to take to get more public lands open for quad use and more uh, parking spaces for them? Well, that, I guess actually when you talk about the trails program? Yeah, well, there are a lot of things. We are looking at ways to increase all kinds of, of other kinds of recreation in southern Michigan. One of the difficulties that we have is we've got a lot of state game area down there and that land is fee restricted and so those recreational activities have to do with wildlife. Right. You can't open them up to trail use or else, or else we'll be giving them back exactly. to the feds. Now, having said that, we are looking at ways that we can make more opportunities available throughout southern Michigan, not only for four-wheelers but for equestrians and mm -hmm. others. But those uses have to be things that do not compromise our management purpose on all of those areas, which is wildlife. Because they were bought with they were bought with they hunters' were bought money, with hunters' dollars. Yeah, and 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 the federal and the, the feds come down hard on us if we don't keep that. What I like to say to folks is, when they say to me, "I'm a taxpayer. You need to listen to me," I'd listen to them. But then I point out to them that paying their taxes keeps them out of jail, but it's got nothing to do with conservation in the state of Michigan. Right, right, because conserv because people that hunt and fish pay for People that hunt and fish are the ones that have paid for all of the opportunity that we have in this state today. Exactly. You'd be proud of that if you're a hunter, fisherman bought a, bought a license, you paid for it. So anyway, folks from McBain, uh, private property to people, uh, good question, uh, on ATVs have to wear helmets. Uh, yes, yeah. the helmet law, and that, that's, a good, that's a great question because we've had it asked a lot. The helmet law, the motorcycle helmet law, did not apply 
to um, off-road vehicles? So the answer is yes. Private property, public property, we're on the trails, you have to. Yeah, it's great questions tonight. Why are bear hunters with dogs allowed to cross private property? Folks from Iowa want to know. They're not, are they? No, they're not, Bob. The problem we have is a lot of dogs, you know, the old adage is kind of like, my dog doesn't know that's private property. Yeah. Okay, so uh, pretty much for the most part, our dog runners, our houndsmen, they try to run in areas where there's larger parcels of land or they have permission, but every now and then a dog is going to stray across somebody's property. Now, the hunt, that doesn't mean a hunter can They go. don't read signs well, do they? Yeah, they, exactly, especially at night. Uh, but that uh, doesn't mean that the hunter can go on that property and harvest an animal. They cannot. The only thing they can, they can do, if their dogs are locked in on that property, they can leave their firearm or their you know, bow or whatever they're using out on the road with the trucks. They can go in unarmed and be able to retrieve their dogs and get them out of there. But that's the only reason they can go that's in the there. Only reason and they and can, if yep. somebody tells them... Not, they cannot do it, then they can't go That's back. That's correct. If they've, been, if they've been informed once that you are not welcome on the property, then they can't go on that property. I happen to know who wrote that piece of, piece of law, so yeah, <laughs> what became law. <laughs> good. Davison, uh, can, hey, th good question. Uh, can you, folks at Davison want to know, can you take down tree stands that are left up all year on state land? Say it's not hunting season, and, and January sure. comes along, and these people have left their tree stands up. No, it's still private property, but we, we would like to know where those are at because they have to get them out of the woods by March 1st, I believe it is. Yeah. And uh, they, have, of course, they're supposed to have their name and address on them, so our officer will follow up on that. But if you take it out of the woods, that's a larceny. So let, let us know about it, be our mm -hmm. eyes and ears, and we'll take care of it. Yeah. Now, if they, take, they leave them up on state land, we will harvest those tree stands. They will and bring be harvested. Yep. Do people they get are sold at auction or anything? People like are invited to come get them, and when we do, we we give them str what we call strong communication. But they can have their tree stand back. They can have their tree stand back. They better better get it out of there. Yeah. And and ticket to follow, right? Mm -hmm. Strong ticket to follow. Okay. Uh, from uh, f uh, Fort Hood. I'm not sure where that's at. Uh, National Forest. Can I shoot a coyote? In a national forest. Absolutely. Uh, our national forests are open to hunting also. Again, all the regulations, state regulations apply. And But absolutely, they can harvest the coyote. You know, there's, there's a great social media question right up now. <laughs> this is great. During the archery deer season, and we cover this virtually every time we meet here. Uh, during the archery deer season, may a person who has a uh, Michigan concealed pistol license carry a pistol openly or must it be concealed? Doesn't matter either way. Doesn't right? matter as long as you have a concealed uh, permit, you can take that firearm with you. But mm -hmm. again, you cannot use it to help you f finish off or harvest that deer. Uh, by your permit, you can carry it. But you know, I, the question comes up: Okay, I shoot my deer. You know, it's it's wounded badly. Can I finish it off with my handgun? The answer is no. So you can carry it with you, use it for self-defense or whatever else you may need but not the hunting. And, and, and therein lie, lies the difference. Uh, the, that's in the penal code, the, the, uh, the fact that you can carry a concealed right. weapon. Yep, that's correct. And, and you're dealing with, uh, with wildlife, uh, with the, I'm trying to remember the name of the act. That, uh, wildlife Conservation Act. Wildlife Conservation Act. Yeah. Right, and that, that actually applies to other aspects of um, uh, you've uh, a loaded firearm and motor vehicle. That applies to your hunting rifle, but not to your CCW, of course. Um, anything, we cannot supersede the CCW legislation. So if somebody is actually um, using a light at night to locate game when, it, when it's legal, you know, not after 11 o'clock before 6 and not November at all, um, they can have their handgun with them under their CCW permit. If they have the CCW. If, if they have the CCW. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Interesting question from Roseville. Why doesn't the DNR split bear season, baiting in the spring and dogs in the fall? Well, spring bear hunting is only for when you have tremendous populations, right? That's where they have tremendous populations. And we do try to partition things out so bait hunters and hound hunters have abundant opportunity. But there's always a little conflict in the interstitial space between them, particularly in the northern lower peninsula. Okay. Is it legal to hunt coyote on my private property in Lapeer? Uh, people are calling from Wall Lake. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Please and do. About 365 days out of the year, too, right? right? Just about. Right. We do have seasons on them, but if a private property owner has uh, coyotes that are doing or about to be doing damage, then they can harvest them year-round. Cool question from Kalkaska. Why doesn't the DNR enforce the two-gallon bait rule on private land? We do. If you sense that somebody, your neighbor, is, has a larger bait pile than that, 
please call our Report All Poaching hotline at 1-800-292-7800 and report that. I guess, Bob, this is a good time to, you know, people all ask us all the time, what can I do to help? Yeah. And we tell them, you can be our eyes and ears out there. If you see something, if you think something's illegal or you know something, somebody's violating the law, please get good information. Most people have a camera that'll take pictures now and they can even send us, send us those pictures. But be our eyes and ears and report to the Report All Poaching Hotline. We'll get an officer out there to look into that violation. But by no means do we want anybody ever to take any enforcement action in their own hands. Be yeah. a good listener, be a good observer, get us information. Especially hunting, because if you start doing that and there are guns involved, it's, mm -hmm. Absolutely. it's, it's just it's just not a winnable situation. Absolutely. Hey, and there's a good question from Detour up in the UP, eastern part of the UP, one of my favorite towns. If you have a master angler fish, why doesn't a DNR biologist drive to the angler's location? You'd be doing that all summer, wouldn't I you? I would be doing that all the time. That's all I would be doing. Uh -huh. uh, we are trying to get more scales uh, at, at uh, DNR offices for where anglers can bring them. Uh, I think we're going to have one at Muskegon State Game Area here pretty soon and one also at the Traverse City office here pretty soon. So you'll be able to take your fish to those two locations to get them weighed. We also have one in Cadillac at the Carl T. Johnson Hunting and Fishing Center. Which is a great place mm -hmm. to go anyway. Hey, Marcus, has Higgins Lake ever been gill netted? Uh, our late uh, trout fishing success, these folks claim, has uh, demised greatly in the last two years. Uh, if they're referring to like a tribal gill netting, not that I'm aware of. Um, and, uh, you know, with lake trout and Higgins Lake, you know, you do get strong year classes and weaker year classes. Um, I had reports from anglers last winter that they were catching a lot of smaller sublegal lake trout. So I that's good news. so we have a, a good year class that's coming through, and those fish should be legal this year. Um, so I suspect that that's going to change. But no, I, I don't believe there's ever been any gill netting. Yeah. We should warn, warn uh, Sergeant uh, Joe Molnar, conservation officer up in the Alpena area. And uh, this question comes from Alpena. If I live in the city, can I shoot the squirrels with a blowgun? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, somebody needs to, you need to talk to somebody. No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> and Russ from Charlevoix, folks want to know, you ever think about just opening everything on Saturdays like they do for fishing for, for, for wildlife? Well, you know, and that question comes up every single year from somebody. And the, the bottom line is that every time we've done a survey, particularly for deer, more guys want the November 15th opener yes. than any other day. In fact, more guys want that day than want more deer in the woods. So and, and, we keep it up. And, mm -hmm. and the first thing is, is if you went to a Saturday, I remember when we it used to open on Saturday. You did, we did that twice. Oh, didn't yeah, we? That, yeah. Well, you see, I'm just old enough. This will be my 47th opening day of gun season in a row coming up. Mm -hmm. It would give you an idea how old, how old this old so-and-so is getting. But anyway, uh, and he did that. And, and, all, and all I heard from the guys in those years were, the only reason the DNR did that is because they could sell more licenses. <laughs> so, mm, okay. <laughs> it, you, can't win it. No. you can't win it anyway. But yeah, it would be kind of nice to open it up on a mm -hmm. weekend. That's for sure. But, but it's not going to happen. So, Six Lakes. Uh, if young people can hunt whenever the parents will let them, why do we still need to use deer hunt? So you know, with the mentor with the mentor programs right. and stuff like that, if they can hunt, why do we still need the youth deer hunt? Well, that that's just a great time for, for fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, mothers and sons, uncles. Well, and, and you know, Bob, a lot of folks are saying, you know, why do we have the youth season? That, you know, we need to make sure people understand if we don't get our youth involved, if we don't get them out in the outdoors and get them hooked on hunting and fishing, our future hunting and fishing is going to have problems down the road. Well that and, and the other piece to remember is that kids literally take an almost immeasurable number of deer. They are not killing all the big bucks. They are not creating that much noise. And deer aren't that smart anyway. They forget about it. I by could the time not deer season and I along. could not and, and this year is the first the first time in a while I haven't had you with deer hunters. And so next year or next year call me if you need a place to hunt. Because because uh, I think it's a sin to let some Good deer country go without mm -hmm. uh, without getting uh, youngsters involved. Um, are you allowed to use bigger than two inch traps to catch coyotes? Folks, Reed City would like to know. Bigger than a, a two inch trap? Yeah, right. You can. I, I'm I'm assuming they're talking about a, a number two trap. Yes, yeah. you can use it bigger than a number two. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, 
Will oh, he, folks want to know uh, too? Uh, this on social media coming in. What are the license fees going to be next year for hunting and fishing? Basically, what a deer license going to be twenty bucks. Right. 15. There's going to be some changes coming in. Um, there's going to be a base license they're going to have to purchase first to be able to get. But the they get a small game license for mm -hmm. purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would suggest that if they if they have interest in finding out what it's going to be, is go on our website. We've got a lot of good information on the website to explain what's coming for next year. We're very excited about it. It's going to give us an opportunity to have some additional funding come into the department to be able to do more things that we want to do. Well, we well, have not had a funding increase in 16 or 17 years. 17 years. Right. And 17 the other years. thing to remember is even now with this base license, which is the small game license and uh -huh. the deer license, it is still the cheapest deer license in America. Still the cheapest license in America. Right now, you're $15 below the next cheapest, which happens to be Hawaii, where you spend 30 bucks to shoot a fallow deer. Wow. We got a great bargain going either way. We, we, do, have, we do have a great, and the other thing too is, is you used to have a sign on, on the set of Michigan Outdoors which says hunters pay for conservation. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do that. Let's do that. I don't, I don't want the non-hunters paying for it, and I don't want the Humane Society paying for it, do you? <laughs> right. <laughs> because then they will have a stake in it, so. Okay, will there be a, uh, an increase, or will there be a price for the crossbow stamp? Um, folks from Taylor want to know. No, that, no, that's, no, that's that didn't still change, be free. And that, that's another good point, Bob. If people would please, if you're hunting with a crossbow, please go to your sports shop or wherever you get your license. Get your crossbow endorsement. Uh -huh. okay? it's, not, it's not a license. It's, it's Doesn't an endorsement. Cost anything. That helps us track how many folks are out there actually using crossbows mm -hmm. versus the number that of uh, endorsements that are, that are actually marked up versus what we feel we actually have out there pretty big discrepancy. We want to be able to get a better handle we do. on it. We want to understand why people use crossbows. Right. Do they help right. with retention? Do they help with recruitment? We're not trying to follow people around in the woods. No. We just want to try to figure out what the addition of that opportunity means to sportsmen in the state because of Because you're trying to get you're trying to get more opportunity for people and more more people doing it because otherwise hunting can be a dying sport, couldn't it? Exactly. Okay. I can't tell you how many times I've had folks and I just had another one today that told me said you know, I, I haven't been able to bow hunt for years, and I, I took up crossbowing. I've, I've been back in the woods, mm -hmm. and I mean, excited. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a great thing. Yeah. Well, you know, just getting people snoot full of fresh air and, and a chance to look at wildlife is... Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's, that's, uh, that's one of those things that makes life just a, just a lot better. Mm -hmm. isn't it? You bet. Okay, what's the latest with the Selene hatchery, uh, Selene, Michigan hatchery? Is it still being used? Yeah, it hasn't been used for uh, fish rearing by the department for a long time. Um, but I do believe they are still doing some, uni some universities are using those ponds still uh, for some research projects. Okay, and from Otisville, hey, that's, that's a great place. Uh, Otisville, boy, uh, it's, it's great lakes down there too that don't get mentioned, that mm -hmm. great fishing lakes, bluegill lakes and stuff. Who've, why do they change uh, uh, CCW to CPL or is that basically still the same? CC, I remember concealed oh, carry okay. weapon. It's just a terminology. It's just, just, mm -hmm. just right. Terminology in the law. Right. It's huh? just a terminology is all. And and, and, and these 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 folks from uh, Clarkson want to know. Um, Clarkson, my old hometown. Eight-year-old son, can he still go hunting with me during the normal season? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Absolutely, and and get him a matter license and let him hunt also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what, 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 does, what, do you, what do you know about people driving deer on their property and, and trespassing? That, that, I guess this is from Ann Arbor, and they must have had some, some sort of a trespass issue with the... Uh, but you can drive. De driving deer is, right. is, not, is not... Right. You can drive deer. I mean, that's a common practice that a lot of folks use is deer drives. However, no, you cannot go on private property and drive deer off, off of somebody's private property. Um, it, that's trespassing, and we don't want that. Russ, we got to cover this question. We we got wolves now. We got to get cougars. Oh. Okay. Social media question. Uh, uh, wondering how many cougars you think there are in the nor in northern Michigan. If by northern Michigan you mean the northern Lower Peninsula, yeah. none. We got eight or nine running around the UP. There's no question that they could survive. Okay, in the northern Lower, but. Most likely they get into trouble, and it's important to remember we've got thousands of hound hunters and cross-country skiers and bicyclists and deer hunters, this, that, and the other thing, and not once has anybody ever put a cougar up a tree. Most of those cougars start with something like, I went outside for a smoke at 2 o'clock in the morning and I heard something in the garbage that jumped me from behind. I'm pretty sure there's more to that story that yeah. we aren't hearing. Yes, but we do yes. have them in the Upper Peninsula. And, and we, we know they might move through, but, but residents... 
Probably not, huh? We don't have any evidence that they've even moved through. We had some that would come this way. So there was one killed in Chicago, you recall, about two years ago. And if it could have gotten across all the highways, railroad tracks, and cities in northern Indiana, it could have ended up here. But to this point, we have no evidence of cougars, wild ones. There's been an escaped cougar off of somebody's property that they had as a pet, one or two of those, but no wild ones. Mm -hmm. We may get one sooner or later. They're moving out of the Dakotas, coming this way. Cougar populations are at all-time historical highs throughout the Intermountain West. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's good news for them. Good news for them. Okay. National City, uh, why can't we hunt crossbow for, with a crossbow for bear in the Red Oak area? It was an oversight, just pure and simple, and uh, that's something that we may look to address in the future. Okay, <laughs> folks from Flint, I, I don't mean I don't mean to laugh, but but th this is absolutely yeah. Yeah. you hear a lot of bunkum in this world, and sure. they've obviously heard that they're that you guys are letting mountain lions go in Michigan, and that's absolutely not well. What's a true. nice word for BS? Uh, speculative. It's speculative. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What's the deal with not allowing disabled who aren't a veteran uh, to get discounted fishing licenses? That's all determined by the legislature. That's correct. Right. Okay. Folks from Traverse City wanted to know that. Um, uh, wolf, hunt, uh, wolf hunting. Folks from Mount Pleasant were saying, why isn't the DNR publicizing the wolf attacks in the UP? I'm not sure what the question bears to. We haven't had any people attacked. We've right. had one person over in Minnesota. Not to say that it couldn't happen, but whenever we do get livestock attacks or dog attacks, we do, we do talk about that. those. And, 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 and you couldn't keep those quiet if, 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 if you tried. No, you know? that's the reason behind our hunt. This is a conflict management hunt. The reason we are targeting wolves in this hunt this fall is to help resolve some of those issues. Exactly. Uh, from social media, are you considering allowing silencers at any level for hunting in the near future? No. And that's, uh, that, I know that's something that um, even MUCC, the, uh, their wildlife committee looked at. Uh, I, I, I was at a meeting when we discussed that. There's not support for that. Um, the department does not support that. There's, a, you know, there's advantages, we're told, but there's an awful lot of disadvantage to them also. Yeah, silencers. Right. I mean, it's, that, that begs the question to start. It might, might be a good thing in many ways, but... It right. begs the question. You know, Bob, one of the one of the things that people bring up about the fact about, well, I'm 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 hard of hearing, you know that. And they're saying what? that if if what? Oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> right. uh, if you know, they say that, well, the gun goes off and it's bad for my hearing. You know, what I suggest to them, there's an awful lot of hearing apparatuses out there that muffs you can wear that actually will you know shut off when the bang goes off, but uh -huh. they actually enhance the ability to be able to hear mm -hmm. better. They may even want to look into something like that. Dean, some, some night we've got to do a old conservation officer story and you can use your Walker Game Ear story. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yes. I love that one. <laughs> yep, folks from Ann Arbor, and let's get back to this question. Let's, let's get a once and for all sort of thing on it. Uh, they, they're asking about pistols again, and, and I assume when you're bow hunting, can you use a fin finishing shot with a pistol? If you're bow hunting, uh, no. no, we've already said that. This is from no, Ann Arbor. you can carry it under your uh, concealed pistol license, but you cannot use it for any part of active hunting when you're bow hunting. Now, if they carry their concealed pistol during the firearm season, during the regular firearm season, then yes, you, you may finish off the animal if you want to, but not during the muzzle loading season. It's best just to carry it legally like you can and then use your other hunting apparatus. Or really pay attention to the law. Absolutely. Really get mm -hmm. to know the law well. And folks from Honor, what a great, what a great little town. What a great town. Uh, why don't we enforce the no snagging law in the Platte River? I would bet you that uh, that has been enforced. Uh, yeah, we, we do enforce that very vigorously. And uh, you know, one thing I would say is just because you don't see a conservation officer doesn't mean that there's not one nearby. Um, I can attest to that uh, personally. You know. yeah. um, the other thing is um, you can help us if you are seeing people snag uh, the report all poaching line 1-800-292-7800 is uh, very helpful. You need to provide good solid information for that officer to work with mm -hmm. including vehicle descriptions and license plates, um, good descriptions of people or names if you have them. Um, and our co conservation officers do take that very seriously, and they will follow up. They do. You know, and Dean, Dean has really made this case a number of times. There are not enough conservation officers to enforce 
everywhere and be everywhere every, every time. There are not enough police to do that, and there are only a fraction of, of, the, of the conservation officers. So we really are a self-policing activity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it, it really kind of counts. We have to count on all of us. Right, and that's why we said earlier, you can be our eyes and ears. Get that information to us. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we need sportsmen's help. You know, we do, it's not our game. It belongs to everybody. You know, we're, we're out there to enforce the game laws, but we need everybody's help. If they see somebody doing something wrong, let us know about it. You know, Dean, too, we, uh, we do have a, have a question from, from your old town of Tustin there, one of the great towns in northern Michigan. Uh, can you use a long line in Lake Cadillac? I think they're saying, can you use a milk jug with a line and a minnow and let it float around? Um, the only way you can do that is if you are in, close enough that you are tend, that you are, are able to respond if a fish is hooked. So it's kind of like a tip up, all right? You can set a tip up, but you can't go and take a nap for two hours and then come back and check your tip up. You have to have it under your immediate control. If your question didn't get answered tonight, you can call the local uh, Operation Service Center. Uh, if you can find it in uh, the Hunting and Fishing Guide, you can call that and, and ask those questions uh, to those folks. They'd be glad to answer them if, uh, if they can right at that particular time. So call the DNR office. Destination Michigan, by the way, uh, a show which is near and dear to my heart. And by the way, I am coming back out of retirement. I'm going to do that for another season. Uh, Courtney Brooks is going to host that, and it starts Monday, October October 28th at 7.30 p.m. with a uh, new show and tractors, tractors, tractors and 954 tractors going over the Mackinac Bridge. I got to do that story and that'll be a lot of fun. Also next week here on, on uh, As the Specialist, we will be asking the small business specialists. So tune in uh, again and we really appreciate what you've done. CMU and Pu Public Television appreciates that folks tune in and watch us and this is why we have Ask the DNR on twice a year. And I want to thank everybody who participated. We'll see you again next April.